Thank, thanks a lot. I, I, I've learned as a member of this group, we don't clap for anybody. Come on up, uh, member of the 2015 class of the NASCAR Hall of Fame, Bill Elliott. You can sit wherever you want to. You're a Hall of Famer. I work for you now. They've got okay. you. <laughs> I have a feeling that I'm going to regret that. Uh, you might. <laughs> yeah, it's only been a few days, and, and we've talked before about you've always been one that you're just fine going about your business, that the accolades were not something that you sought after. But going into Wednesday's announcement, what was your thoughts going into it? And when your name came up, what were your immediate thoughts then? Well, you know, like I said there on Wednesday, is I, I try not to think much about what goes on. You know, being a part of the group that was, you know, selected to become no, or nominated for the deal, it's like you, you look through it and you say, well, there's a lot of great guys there, and you, you just try to put it in perspective of kind of where you're at and what your career was all about. And, and I mean, even looking back on all the years that you raced and all the things you did, you never looked that far ahead. And I think that's the, the key point. And to be at this juncture in your life and you, and you look back and you're sitting there and you're among these, this group of guys and you say, you know, they're all important to the sport. And for them to call my name, it's, it's like, wow, this is pretty incredible. I mean, it was just an incredible day. And then, then, you, then you sit there and reflect back on all the people that had – that played some role or some part or or did something to help connect the dots to get to, to where you're at today. And, and and it's just an incredible road. It's an incredible journey through life. And you know, to be to be able to I guess one thing I'm so thankful for that, you know, I'm still around to enjoy this. And and that's and that's the things that I, I really say. It's something that, you know, I can set and and, and hold sacred and enjoy and, and and, you know, I had so many family and friends and, you know, fans and everybody else, you know, text me, call me, send me emails, whatever. I hadn't Twittered yet. I hadn't, I'm working on that one. But, <laughs> uh, you know, Chase has been so getting now we, got, we, we got Dale Jr., Smoke, Bill's going to be next. Uh, well, Chase is working on me, but I'm not <laughs> there yet. <laughs> but it's just been an incredible day and, and as far as Wednesday goes. And just from that point on uh, – you know, it's you know I, I'm sure it's going to continue to sink in day in and day out as we continue through this journey. And you know, it's just I just wish there was a lot of people there that could could have been there Wednesday, and I want them to be there a part of this deal as we continue on. Uh, we want them to be there January the 30th. You know, a lot of people that are newer to the sport they think Bill Elliott's career started in 1985. It went like a rocket in 1985. But we were talking yesterday with a lot of our fans at the hall about how much went into Bill Elliott's career. Tell the folks a little bit about how you got involved and what evolved from those early 70s times into the early 80s to where, you know, you guys had made it. Well, I'm sure a lot of you guys know my, my whole life history, back, forth, middle, sideways, and backwards, and whatever other way in the book. But, you know, really looking back and, and you're – you know, you look back on what really molded you into where you're at today is, you know, my dad just, you know, him having race cars and the ability to, he, he never drove himself and just that, that part of it and just being exposed to all that racing at that point in time. And then you look back at the history and I don't know that I really realized the history of Dawsonville, especially, you know, when I was, you know, 12 14, 16 years old, I didn't realize what history Dawsonville and what, you know, Raymond Parks and Lloyd C. and all those guys re really contributed to to that area and, you know, what they had done actually in the past. And, you know, you heard a little bit about the Moonshiners, but it was it was almost so far removed by the late 60s, early 70s that it was non-existent. So, you know, as a kid growing up and being molded and shaped and, you know, but really – growing up in a rural area as I did and, and becoming that part of it. And then and then you look around and you see the dynamics that drove us into where we're at today and you say, well, you know, it, it took a lot of a lot of people, a lot of parts and pieces. It took a lot of my dad giving up a lot of stuff to buy the parts and pieces that we did 
that we used to do what we did. And, you know, if you could take that formula and try to do it again today, it would never work. You would never be able to, to have the same outcome because, you know, you, you take this steel and you, you see where the level of racing is today versus what it was even 10 years ago, much less 30, 40 years ago. It's just a whole different world. You know, and even sitting listening to Rex, Rex White yesterday, and, and some of the insight that he had and, and some of the neat stories that he told is just, and, and that's an incredible part of the past, guys. I mean, that was the thing that, that shaped us, molded us. You know, the 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 group, like a Rex White, like a lot of those guys that were early on before me. And, you know, I'm just another part of the chain. Is there, you know, there's going to be another guy, another guy, and another guy. And, you know, I'm just very thankful that it, it turned out we, we built a championship team there in, in Dawsonville, Georgia. We kind of did it our way. You know, with the help of my dad, Harry Melling, a lot of different people, and uh, and it, it's just been an incredible journey. Was there ever any one element of the journey that this is what kind of catapulted you to the next level? Well, you know, Winston, it's, it's all been like, like I said a minute ago, connecting the dots. You know, it, it's just like I'll never forget going to Harry Melling. You know, I think a lot of people know the story. It actually was here in Charlotte in, in 1980. They had a what they call a Buck Stowe Team Challenge where a winner and a non-winner teamed up and raced for the highest finish at the end of the day. You know, and Benny asked me to be a part of that deal, and then Benny at that time was being sponsored by Melling. So I said, I asked Benny one day, I said, do you think, Mr. Melling would give us any money and he says well how much were you looking for and I said well you know five hundred dollars you know <laughs> and, and that was a heck of a deal for us I mean it was it was still five hundred dollars that was more than what we had so Harry agreed to give us five hundred dollars we put his name on the side of the car we we had a good run that afternoon I, I, it seems like we finished in the top ten and Benny fell out for some reason and uh, I don't recall who ended up winning the deal but we went on from here. Our next race was going to be Atlanta. So we left Melling's name on the side of the car. So we ended up qualifying on the outside pole in Atlanta. So being as good equipment as what we had, the, the clutch tore up right off in the, in the race because we were using just slightly used equipment in the car at that point in time. I'm sure it was used up five races ago. But anyway, we came in and changed a clutch during the race. You know, and I mean, we were still... You know, we were 30, 40, 50 laps down, 100 laps down, whatever it was. But Harry came over and watched us, you know, watched us change change it all and go back out and run. And he was so impressed that Ernie and I drove up there uh, in the winter and talked to him about sponsoring us for the next year for 12 races. I think it was going to get, you know, $2,500 a race or something like that was what we had proposed to him for 12 races for the next year. And that would have been 81. And that's when NASCAR went from the 115-inch wheelbase cars down to the 110 wheelbase cars. So it was it was a pretty big change. It was going to be a lot of money for us because we had to buy a new car and a lot of different things that, that it entailed in that. But uh, I'll never forget going into Harry Melling's office and I sat over in the corner and I probably didn't say two words. I mean, it was... <laughs> And Harry looked Harry look at me, and I'm like, I'd look at the floor or look at the wall or whatever. But he was, he was such a visionary of what he saw in us that, I mean, he saw something we didn't see. And he knew we, we had a good worth ethic. He knew that we could do the job. And, you know, he took a chance on us. I mean, here's a guy in Jackson, Michigan, so far removed. Uh, and and really, we became really good friends through our deal. And uh, when he passed away in the 90s, it was a sad day because he he was really the one that 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 helped us go to the level we went to. And without him, we'd have never made it. Okay. Questions from uh, the media here. We've got a microphone here. If you've got a question for Bill, Kenny, start us off. Kenny Bruce with NASCAR.com. Bill, we always hear drivers talk about after they, well, when they're driving, that they don't have time to enjoy the success and the wins that they have. Uh, now that you've been out of the car, now that you're going into the Hall of Fame, have, have you had time to sit back and, and look at your career and really enjoy some of the things that you were able to accomplish? I really do, and I think I've never really thought about that statement until you just said it. And I think that's a very true fact. 
I think when you're in the heat of the battle, you know, you're inside the bubble and you don't have a chance. But once you kind of get outside of it a little bit, you can say outside looking in and really look at the accomplishments and achievements of what not only we did as a group in Dawsonville, but, you know, when I went to junior for three years and then went to Ray for three years and, and all the stuff that that entailed and, and all of, and, and especially with all the fans and friends that you acquired throughout the country. I think that was the most important part of if I look back on everything, if, if you could take the wins away, what would be the next best? It would be, and I, I think you could probably write down what even with the wins of the family and the friends and, and all the, the people you, acquaintances if you've met over the years. And I think that's the important part. But you're you're 100% correct. You don't see that until you get out of, out of it and can look back. Other questions? Hill? Hey, Bill. Hill Overton, WIXC Radio. I, you. I, I think we've met somewhere. Yeah, one, at least once. Yeah, at least. Uh, back in 1983 is when it was. I was going to ask a question about that. We were in the garage, the old garage at Darlington. You had just won a poll there, nervous and excited and all of that. Was that your first poll ever in NASCAR? And uh, it was in 81, that. I think, at Darlington was my first poll. There. Maybe it was 81. I don't know. You it was one it. of those years. I know we both <laughs> get off on that deal. But, yeah, I agree. It was uh, – you know, you look back on all that stuff and all the things that happened and and you can reflect on it. And there's, you know, there's, I can't remember everything, but there's there's snippets of here and there that you can remember and the things and the people and, and that part of it. And I think that's as you, you, especially at this point, you reflect on. Other questions for Bill? Up here. Kelly Crano from Popular Speed. Bill, what's been the reaction like in the garage area now that you've been more visible being around, being here for Chase? What Before the, the announcement on Wednesday and, and if there's been anything since you've been here this weekend? Oh, everybody comes up and congratulates me about this. And, you know, a, a lot of the, the text matches is well-deserved. And, and I, you know, and like I said, I try to look at it as a team effort. You know, everybody that's in, been involved with me throughout the years because there's no one person that made this happen, and, and including me. It's a, it's a group of guys, a group of people, a, a group of people that was dedicated to do what they needed to do. And, and you know, walking around the garage and, and even the, from the fans to the, to the other competitors that I know, and you know, everybody says congratulations, and, and and it's such a different perspective when you walk into racetrack. Uh, it's 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 actually blown me away because you know it used to be you were kind of invisible, but now you're kind of visible to a lot of different people, and and that's it's kind of been a wild experience. Is there any one of those messages, not to get personal, but any one of those messages that jumped out you know, like? Didn't expect that, or man, that's really cool, or something. Yeah, I got that one from bumped. Mark Melling. Yeah, yeah, and say so he sent a picture of his dad on one of the deals, and said so that was a very special part for him because, you know, Mark and Matt were just small kids when I was involved with Harry and Chris, uh, uh, Harry's wife Chris at the time, and they were, you know, we we I mean we really got to know each other really well. We had a great time together. I mean, Harry was a great guy. That's neat. Any other questions for Bill? Kenny? Actually, this is for you, Winston. Oh, good. I don't, I don't <laughs> I gotta want to hear put this. you on the spot, but I want to put you on the spot. You've dealt with the induction ceremonies for all of these people, and, and, and you've seen the fan reaction as they come into the hall. What's the reaction been like since Bill's been announced as going into the hall? I would say every year the reaction that, that I've seen in the hall from the fans, from our members, and we did a Q&A yesterday with Bill, has been one of excitement. And they all have their different personality. And I think people, and, and Bill, you can react to this, I think people were very excited for Bill. And if you win 16 most popular drivers, you're going to have a lot of fans. You know, I mean, I'm not a rocket scientist, but I got that figured out. But I sensed... A lot of excitement yesterday from the fans for Rex White. Yeah, I agree. Too. Yeah. That that there is such an appreciation and respect for what people accomplished and what we're trying to do in showcasing the history of the sport. And I think the fans like the balance in somebody that's more recent or the other types of competitors that we've had. 
as well as the pioneer competitors. And just like the people in the room, you know, you're in the room, I'm gonna be, I'd be surprised if anybody in the room had five names that matched exactly this year. Could be wrong, don't know that, but I'd be surprised if anybody did. But I think they're like the voting members. Is They're not disappointed. They may have stacked it up different. And I think there is a high level of excitement about Bill because he's more recent and all those most popular drivers. But there are a lot of people that have said, you know, I was glad to see Wendell, Fred Lorenzen, Rex White get in as well. Oh, You've absolutely. Absolutely. Two over here. <clears throat> I got Jim Shaw Observer, Bill, at the end of your, I think it was your very first interview after the selection process was over, you joked at the end that uh, today you're just known as Chase's dad. <laughs> um, but what, what, has, what has been the most enjoyable part of that role for you? Is it sort of being a race fan or is it watching uh, him develop as a driver? Just what, what, what is the most enjoyable part of that? I think there's a lot of things. If you if you look kind of break it down in perspective, uh, it's a seeing him how to handle what he's thrown into at at the age he's at. You know, being able to watch him grow, watch him, you know, especially make the achievements he's made on the racetracks. But just the main thing, just see how he how he evolves as a person. You know, and I think. Uh, you know, I said this earlier today. I said I think I can help him more outside the car in today's world than I can really as he gets in the car. Because I, I, I'll give you an example. We were at a short track several years ago, and I, I was saying, well, this guy's running this line, and that guy's running that line. And, you know, and I, then Chase goes out, and he makes some laps, and he's really fast, and he kind of runs his own line, and I just shut up, you know. Because, you know, they have their own way of doing things. And, and sometimes either the way he processes stuff and the way he wants a race car to be might not the way, be the way I see it. Uh, so I try to stay out of that side of it and let him ask the guys that are more current, like a Reagan or a Kevin or a Dale Jr. or some of those guys that have been doing it week in, week out. You know, at least Daytona I could come up you ask me a question, I wouldn't be totally stupid about it because I did run the car around the racetrack a little bit. But, but from that point on, but but to me, just watching him grow as an individual and, and see kind of how he fits in, how, and just sitting back from afar and watching the fans, how they relate to him, how other media folks relate to him, it's just interesting. And I, I find that just kind of where I'm at. I like to be the kind of a way out of the, the limelight and let him be his person. Yes, sir. Mike Neff from FrontStretch.com. Bill, Marcus Ambrose laid down that fast lap at Michigan a year or so ago, and they interviewed you afterwards, and you made the comment that when you went out and qualified with your lap, you didn't know if you were going to come back alive or not. How many guys, just in your opinion, that are in a garage now would strap themselves into a car if they didn't know if they were going to come back alive? I, I'm sure there would be several of them. They'd set themselves on fire if they could. I mean, they'd be just a part of it. I mean, they do a hell of a job anyway, but uh, I mean, at the point in time, I mean, and that's what I was, you know, Rex White was talking yesterday about, well, you know, I said, you know, we're strapping our cars with our seat belts and shoulder harnesses and all this stuff. He said, heck, I never had shoulder harnesses to what, 1963 or <laughs> <Yeah>. four? <laughs> he said, I drove all these races and just had the lap belt on. I said, man, I'll tell you. And that's what I, that's why I respect that group so much. You know, I read a book on Raymond Parks back a few years ago that Dale Inman got me into, and I've tried to read several about a lot of the different guys and, and all the stuff that they went through and the things that they did, and it's, and it's incredible that you live through it. I, and, and you look back, and, and I look back at all the stuff that I did and, and you know, some of the wrecks that you had, and you just wonder how you made it through it. And you know, granted, the sport has taken a, a, a great step in safety and a lot of other things, and and I'm sure it's got areas it could be better in, but it's it's definitely a thousand percent better than it ever was. And, and I'm just proud that that 
that has been able to be facilitated into these cars and the speedways and everything that they've learned and you know and granted it needed to be there anyway but but i swear you know some of them stories some old guys tell it it cracks me up and you know just like going to daytona and, and running because because you know really the reason i said that statement was i was sitting there in the infield when kale tried to run the second lap at daytona what was that in 83 i believe, I believe so. 84 yeah, did he flip 83 83 when he flipped upside down off turn four and i'm thinking well you know, I got a pretty good chance of not making it back here, so <laughs> but we'll give it our best shot. Time for one final question over here. Yeah. Bill, I know as proud and as and excited as you are about getting a name for the hall, I know you're just as proud and excited for Chase. Did you really encourage him strongly to become a race car driver, or was that solely his own choice and desire to, to follow in your footsteps? <laughs> I tried to discourage him. Uh, because I know what the sport's all about. You know, I've been through it. I, you know, I said, look, I said, you know, this is something that you're going to do for yourself. Don't do it for me. Don't do it for anybody else. It's your decision. And that's what I, I reflected on earlier today. Uh, I was asked some questions, and I said, you know, even early on, I said, you know, you need to be a kid first and foremost. You know, grow up, have, be – be, be as normal as you possibly can be, you know. And, and even the first year when he started driving some go-karts, you know, we only did it on a very limited basis. And I said, you know, if you want to go race, we'll go race. If you want to go play with your friends, go play with your friends. And, you know, as we continued to grow, I said, because it's going to get serious enough soon enough. And I think that's where you end up today. And, I mean, once you get, you know, 18, 19, 20 years old, and that's what I've tried to still tell him today. I said, go out and have fun. I said, go out, enjoy what you do. I said, you've got a knack. You're very good at it. You understand what you want. And I said, just let the rest flow. I said, that's, that's the best advice I can possibly give you. Well, Bill, thanks for taking the time to come out. We'll let you go and be Chase's dad for the rest of the day and even tomorrow with the graduation party. But I'll Chase, work on that. But, but Chase is going to need to share some of the limelight and go back to being Bill's son for a while in okay. the coming months. But uh, congratulations, exceptionally well-deserved. Well, thank you guys. Y'all have a great day.